This is called Advanced Stretching for Elite Soccer Players. I played a lot of soccer growing up. I love soccer. I am Dr. Amir Rashidian with Mid-Atlantic Chiropractic Centers, and my oldest son is on a soccer team. Shout out to FCA. I've been seeing a lot of players on the team, and the one thing I'm noticing is they're not flexible. Now, soccer requires you to be flexible. Even though this is made for soccer players, literally every elite athlete can do these stretches, and it will benefit them tremendously. There are small nuances that are specifically for soccer, but it really really doesn't matter. It's going to help with basketball. It's going to help with football. It'll help with wrestlers as well. So anybody can really do these stretches. The reason I call them advanced stretching because you need to be somewhat flexible to be able to do some of these stretches. So if it's difficult for you, just gradually work up into it and start low, start little, modify if you have to. Try a few of the poses. You may not be able to hold them as long as I tell you to hold them. That's okay. Brandy's going to help with timings. If I say, hey, we're going to hold this stretch for 10 seconds or 15, 20 seconds, she's going to kind of help approximate for that. Ideally, I want you to learn and memorize the routine so you can do it on the field. So you don't need me. You don't need the camera. You don't need to be watching it to do this. So you'll have to do it a few times with me guiding you through it, but then you'll be able to do it on your own. And when I say something like you have to hold this for 20 seconds, it's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly 20 seconds. You can hold it longer. You can hold it less. So anyways, I hope this helps you. Uh, comment, subscribe, like the video. Let us know if you like it. Share it with people, you know, athletes who aren't stretching the way they're supposed to. So let's get right to it. The first thing we start with is a hamstring stretch. I'm going to, this is our camera. Sorry, this is our um, voice recorder here. So I'll have this next to me. right there all right first stretch we're doing is a hamstring stretch so you're going to interlock your fingers behind the knee you're going to kick your foot up as fast as you can and you're going to hold it up there for two seconds we're going to do 10 repetitions per leg so one two down right back up two two three three four four five Five. Each time you can go a little further, try to go a little further and really try to pull your toes down towards you as well to get a calf stretch as well. This is number seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Now lower it slowly. And the other leg. Two second hold, down right back up. Really pull with your hands too. I believe this is number five. Six. Seven. Eight, you'll notice it goes further each time. And that's 10. After two seconds, you lower it nice and slow all the way down. Now, we're going to put our arms all the way up and press the back of your hands to the ground. Really let the front of your body stretch. This helps loosen up your shoulders as well. And then what I want you to do is bring your arms out to the sides. Keep the back of your hands on the ground. You can put palms down, doesn't matter. You're gonna lift up one leg, bring it all the way around, touch the ground, and go back. 10 times. You should have no trouble doing this, but if it's hard and you can't get it all the way down, you can bring your leg lower like this, as opposed to all the way up. Or put a chair there and just touch the chair when you bring it down. But really, we want to create some mobility and loosen up your lower back with this one. So the other leg 10 times. You might feel a stretch in the back of your hip as well.
That's number 10. Now, we're going to take the thumbs, the part of the hand that comes and becomes the thumb called the thenar pad. We're going to put it behind the skull. There's a bony ridge at the bottom of your skull and the back of your head. So you're going to interlock your fingers, put the thumbs underneath the skull, feet together, feet are relaxed, legs are straight. You're going to lift your head up. And what we're doing with this stretch is we're pulling our hands up toward the sky. We're not pushing our our head toward our feet. You're just lifting up to stretch your neck. And you hold this somewhere between five and 10 seconds, as long as you're comfortable. It should not be a painful stretch. And then you're gonna put one arm down, put your left hand down. With the right hand, pull your head to the right. And while you're pulling to the right, push your shoulder away from your head. Almost like you're reaching with that left hand away from your body. And really feel the stretch on the side of your neck. Pull as far as you can comfortably. It should not be painful. If it's painful, don't do it. You hold that for about five to 10 seconds as well. Switch hands, pull the head up and over to the left. Reach away with your right hand. Pull that right shoulder away from your right ear. As far as you can, you should feel a big stretch all the way from the neck into the shoulder. Five to 10 seconds again. Now bring your arms all the way up again. And we're gonna do almost like a sit up. Keep your legs straight. You're gonna come up carefully, reach for the toes, put your hands on your toes for just a few seconds. By now your hamstrings are loose. You should be able to touch those toes. Hold for just a few seconds. Next, we're gonna bring the feet in. Knees bent, feet together. Interlock your fingers under your toes. Bring your feet as close to your body as possible. Try to sit up straight and you're gonna flutter. Just kind of move the knees up and down. This loosens up the inside of your hips. After doing that for a few seconds, we're gonna do the same two second hold 10 repetitions. So you're going to push down as hard as you can for two seconds. Relax. Go again. Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. It's not a big muscular stretch. It's more of a loosening up of the hips right now. That's number seven. Eight, try to sit up nice and tall. Now I know some of you can probably reach really far forward. Uh, go ahead, that's fine. If you feel a bigger stretch by reaching forward and pushing down, that's okay. Next, we're gonna go into a V. So legs out, comfortable distance. Sit nice and tall. You should already feel a stretch on the inner thighs. So what we're going to do is stretch one side, then the other, then go to the middle. So when you go to the side, I want you to keep your arm inside your leg. We're not doing this. We're staying inside. So elbow to the inside of the knee, reach for your foot. Hold for two seconds and come back. And again. And we'll just do eight of these. You can do 10 if you like. This is number six. Try to keep your back fairly straight. Don't round your back. This might be eight or nine. I lost count. We're going to the other side. Remember, elbow stays inside the knee. Sometimes one side's tighter than the other. That's okay. If you want, you can do an extra couple reps on the side that's tighter. is six, two second hold, seven, and eight. You should go just a smidge further every time. It should feel like it's loosening up. Now you come back to the middle. 
What I want you to do is one hand behind one hand in the front and slide forward just to try to spread the legs a little further. And we're gonna go right down the middle. Now, the important part with this one is when you go forward to stretch, you're gonna feel the stretch around the groin and inner thighs. Every time you lean forward, you're gonna push the feet out. You'll see the feet go like this and relax. Go like this and relax. Two second hold, 10 reps. It's not a passive stretch, it's active, you're working. So you're pushing the legs out with the back muscles to try to spread them further, okay? So one, one, two, two, and you're really pushing those legs. Three, three. Each time you go just a little further, but don't round the back too much. Four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, and eight, eight. The inner thighs should be feeling a nice deep stretch. Now we're gonna go on our hands and knees. And this one, all you're gonna do is move your lower back down, let, let your abdomen sink toward the floor, and then push it up. This is called the cat and the camel. So down and up. And do this as, as five to 10 times. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. We're just kind of loosening up the lower back. After just a few of these, we're gonna go into what's called a cobra pose where you allow your hips to sink down towards the floor. Look upward. Hold for three or four seconds. And then we're gonna go the other way and just let the whole low back stretch. You may even feel stretching your arms. You hold that for a few seconds. And then we go back and forth a few times. Just a couple second hold. And you can do this as many times as you want. If your back feels real tight, you may want to do 10 of these. Back doesn't feel tight, it's nice and loose, just do three. Now, here's a stretch that may be a bit difficult for everybody. This is a stretch for the back of your hips to gluteal area, piriformis muscle specifically. It tends to be a very important muscle for stabilizing your low back, especially during activity. So we're gonna bring the right foot forward, line up your heel with the back knee. So right foot forward, left foot back. And what you're gonna do is allow, don't let the, the foot slide in very much. It may slide a little bit. You're gonna put your hands down and bring this knee down towards the ground. When it touches the ground, you want this to be about a 90 degree angle. My flexibility doesn't allow it to be 90 degrees, yours might, but you keep it right here. And then you're gonna just sink your body down onto that. Bring your arms forward and you're gonna go as low as you can and just rest here. And Brandy's gonna start the timer. Give me 20 seconds. When I do this, usually I do a full 30 seconds just because for me, this is important. I need this stretched a lot. So I stay here for 30 seconds. After about 10 seconds, you're gonna feel it release a little bit. You'll feel relaxed a little bit. You may be able to go a little further. If you can't go all the way down, don't go all the way down. That's 20 seconds. I wanna say one thing. While you're in this position, it's very dangerous to try to adjust your position. Don't try to move your foot or knee. If you're not in the right position, you feel a little uncomfortable, go all the way back up readjust and then come back into it. In this position, if you move, you can hurt yourself. So, um, or, or you can get a cramp or a muscle can go into spasm or pulled. We don't want any of that. So you're gonna come back up. For this one, you can stay, you can keep the legs where they are and you're gonna twist to your right, looking over the bent knee. I want you to look all the way back at your back foot. Keep your eyes on that back foot lift the knee off the ground and twist a little further. Your back knee should be off the ground and you should feel a stretch on the side of your right hip and the front of your back hip. And hold this for about 15 to 20 seconds. All right, that's 15 seconds. Put that knee down, 
grab the back of the foot with your right hand and you're going to pull up towards you. This is a quadriceps stretch. You should be feeling it deep. Let's hold this for 15 more seconds, please. You should feel a deep stretch in the front of your left thigh. Real deep stretch. All right, it's 15 seconds. Ideally, you'll do 20 seconds of these, but we're going to shorten it just for the sake of this video. Put that down. Bring this knee back. Go back to your hands and knees, called a quadruped position. Cat camel a couple more times. Cobra pose. Child pose. Back to center. Now we're going to do the other leg. Bring the left foot forward. Line it up with your knee. Maybe a little bit past the knee even to, to the right. And then you're going to allow that. You're going to reach down, put your hands on the ground. Allow the knee to go down. Keeping this roughly angled just a little less than 90 degrees. Elbows down. You'll notice one side's going to be tighter than the other for sure. We're going to hold this for 20 seconds. And you should be feeling the stretch in the back of the hip on the left side. Again, don't adjust your position in here. Once you're here, you just stay motionless. Do not move. Your foot will want to, your left foot will want to try to slide down towards your hip. If it does, it's okay. Let it be as long as you still feel the stretch. So that's 20 seconds. When you come up, twist over that bent knee. Look at your back foot. Lift the back knee off the ground. And let it stretch the front of your right hip. And you may feel a stretch on the side of your left hip. 15 seconds. Allow the knee to go down. Reach back with your left hand. Grab your right foot. Pull it up towards you. Hold this for 15 seconds. It's a quadricep stretch. Front of your thigh on the right side. It should be a nice, deep, deep, powerful stretch. A stretched muscle can get stronger faster. All right, that's 15 seconds. You slowly put that foot down. Bring this leg back. Back to the quadruped position. We're going to go up and down a couple of times like this again. A couple more of the uh, cobra and child pose. Again, if your low back feels tight, do more of these. Now, from here, you're going to put your hands on top of each other and rest your forehead on top of your hands. You're going to lift up your right foot, rotate out, touch the ground on the other side. Ten times. And then the other side. Go back into that cobra pose. Come up on your knees. Put your knees together, put your feet together. And this is how we're gonna loosen up our ankles. So you're gonna sit back on your feet. Try to bring your heels as low as you can to the ground without losing your balance. You don't wanna fall back. And you're gonna feel there, there'll be a little bit of pressure in your ankles 
but it's really going to stretch that Achilles tendon at the bottom of your calf. You may feel a stretch in your calf, but for the most part, it's more of a tendon stretch. And we just want to make sure those ankles are nice and loose. So you stay here for, again, as long as you want, 10 seconds to all the way up to 30 seconds. So that's probably 15 or so seconds. Next, we're going to go to another position. It's a yoga pose called the downward dog. And this next one, I want you to now really feel a stretch in your calf muscles, some in the back of the knee as well. There's a small muscle in the back of the knee called the popliteus, and we're stretching that as well. So from the quadruped position, you're gonna lift your knees up, push your heels down onto the ground. I want your feet flat. 20 seconds, we'll start the timer and you should be feeling that stretch in the calf and in the back of your knees. If your hamstrings are really tight, you may feel it there too. Stay motionless. Good. All right. One last Cobra pose to restore that arch in the lower back. Rest here for about three or four seconds. You should already be feeling really loose. Muscles should be fully stretched. We got one last thing to do. This not last one, it's a hip flexor stretch, but it's also going to loosen up your knee joints. The knees need to be nice and loose. Knee capsules need to be nice and loose. So we're going to put the right foot forward, and you're going to sit onto that right foot allowing the back hip to stretch. So your back hip is stretching really deep and you're sitting really far forward. You want your bottom to get as close to the heel in the front as possible. Try to keep your foot flat on the ground and just rest there for, I don't know, three, four, five seconds. Then to really activate the deeper muscles around your knee, we're gonna do 10 lifts. So all you're gonna do is come up and go right back as low as you can, 10 times. Act like you're kicking a soccer ball, you know, with your foot, but way back here. We're not going too far back either. I think that's five or six. We'll count this one at seven. Eight, we're almost done. And 10, good, and switch. So that loosens up the hip capsule, sorry, the, the knee capsule. It really stretches the deeper parts of that knee. So again, you sit onto that heel, let the front of the right hip stretch very, very deep. Try to keep your foot flat. The front foot should be flat on the ground. Now, if you want to make this harder, you lift, you keep the back knee off the ground if you want. I'm not going to do it that way, but you could. That will really help strengthen the, the knee. Uh, but for the sake of stretching, just 10 repetitions. You just come up and go right back. Every time you go down, you go a little deeper. Try to stretch a little more. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the stretch. So listen up. You can't do this stretch right before a game. If you're going in for a game, this is too much stretching before a game. Before a game, have your coach warm you up do some warm-ups, mobilizations, things like that, light stretches. This kind of deep advanced stretching is probably too much right before a game. It's not gonna hurt you, but you're not gonna be as fast and as strong. When you stretch this much, your muscles are gonna be a slightly weaker than they could be normally. So this is more for practice. And some of you may decide to do this stretch at the end of practice, but either way, and, and this stretch routine helps with martial arts as well. I know some of you are doing things like jujitsu. It's a great stretch for that as well. So anyways, I hope this was helpful to you. 
comment, let me know what you think, and uh, share it, and we'll talk again soon, hopefully.